Hi, how's everybody doing? Uh, got the Swigger ball machine. I set it up at a funny angle. I don't know how it's going to shoot out. So, uh, we're going to see. I'm just going to have it at an angle and just try to work on cross court and, uh, you know, down the line. But I don't know how this is going to bounce. And, um, the ball keeps getting stuck. Uh, I don't know. It's ever since I've gotten this machine, which I've had for a few months now, a couple months. That's one of the critiques about this thing. You're in the middle of playing and getting in a rhythm and the ball stick gets stuck in the machine. And uh, I actually have to go get another battery for this thing because uh, you have to be like three feet from it to turn it off, but it'll turn off and it'll turn on way back here. So let's see what we can do. I think it's gonna be, you know, short and we're gonna work on that. But I'll step back, see where it goes. Hopefully we can hit some balls on the strings and uh, get some clean shots in and work on, uh, you know, work on my strokes a little bit. Okay, let's see. Well, that's a little short. Okay. That's all right. We'll work with this. Working on on, on uh, for fuck's sake, what I'm talking about. Just get used to this big racket. This is the biggest racket I've ever hit with or ever played with. A 110. I'm used to playing with the 95s, as I said, but it's a good racket, I'm not saying that. But I got an old school style where I hit kind of flat, and I'm working on hitting with more top spin. See how the back end works out. That one's got some spin on it, so did you see that? All right, let's do it. Fucking man, come on, bro. Get under the ball. Here we go. I love the frame. Bad drop shot. Come on. Are you serious? We're all going in. This is my ideal shot right here. Let's decide. Bring my racket back and swing through it. With hardly any caution. That was off this. I'm saying. Get used to this big club. This fucking club. Excuse my language. I'm getting a little irritated. Plus, I haven't eaten anything all day. And I've been sick. Getting sick, so I'm just coming out here to get through it. Come on, I'm saying, just getting there, getting in a rhythm, and then the balls stop coming out. So yeah, uh, if you ever get a ball machine, do not get this thing. Too many issues with it. The balls get stuck in the machine. Uh, it's hard to adjust. It's just got one type of one type of style. You know, it's just got one type of slices. Well, I'm sorry, hits with top spin. Excessive top spin too. And if you're just trying to get used to a tennis racket, uh, your timing, you got to keep your timing. It's gonna be hard because you might end up framing balls off this frame. Like I just did a couple times. Because you're getting it, you're getting into a rhythm. And then the ball machine. Oh she's hang on. That was close. And then the ball machine stops feeding the balls. So, you know, you can't win for losing pretty much. 
and I'm a pretty optimistic person. I don't really let things bother me too much, but when you're paying 650 bucks for a brand new tennis ball machine, and the only thing this, the, the tennis ball machine's job is to do is at least shoot the balls out. I mean, that's the bare minimum. So, and you, you know, when it's working and it's feeding the balls, you can get a good workout, you can get good practice, and you get your good timing. But as, as I'm singing right now, all the rackets I have are wide body and thick, and I'm not a real big fan of these things because you just, you know, it's just, you're framing balls off it because of the fact that it is a wide body racket like this. And this thing's like 10 ounces, it's light. And the profile, even though it's a wide body, it's 95 square inches, the balance is in the handle and you don't have to swing so hard, uh, you know. But if you're trying to play a modern game of tennis, like the modern way where people are bringing their racket back and hit with a lot of top spin, Rackets like this isn't going to be for you. These are for old school, like kind of how I do it, and just bring it right back and hit through it with minimum top spin. I have a semi, I have an Eastern semi grip on my forehand, and I was getting some good, you know, shots on my backhand, so I ain't, you know, complaining, but I like the size of the racket, maybe 100 square inches for me and a little thinner. So I really, I'm gonna be looking into just getting a custom rackets made. Go find it like, uh, I forget the name of the company, Demeter or something like that, Demeter. Um, Essential Tennis is sponsored by them. And I think they get, I think they do make custom rackets. So I'm gonna look into doing something like that because if I'm gonna be playing competition. Yeah, I can probably win, I can probably win with this thing, but it ain't gonna be like the way I wanna play I'd have to, you know, because I'm trying to start with a little more modern forehand. It would be just straight old school, bringing the racket back and driving it, you know, trying to shorten points and stuff because of the equipment I have. But at least we're out here and I'm feeling a little better. Like I said, I was sick. I was as sick as a sailor uh, this morning and all, all most of the day. And I just said to hell, I had a fight and just come out here and just get out here and hit some tennis balls. And uh, I'm feeling better, so that's that's helping me. And I'm gonna make an attempt to try to eat a sandwich or something later on tonight. Cause everything I've been eating with this diabetic medicine is making me just, you know, throw it all back up. So the thing that I've been doing the most of is, is drinking water. And I had a half a banana earlier, you know, before I got out here and uh, took my, I have this medicine called gabapentin for nerve damage. So I took that because I don't want to take my medicine and vitamins with no, with nothing in my stomach. That'll really make you sick. So I'm not too mad about things. Like I said, the only thing I was getting a little irritated with is when you get in a rhythm and you start to practice and you're trying to get your strokes and your timing and these bugs are so bad right now. Um, it's irritating because you're hitting five, six balls in a row and then 10 seconds, seven, eight seconds go by and the ball's stuck and then you walk over to turn the machine off and it won't turn off because the battery's almost dead in this thing or whatever. And then you got ball firing at you. Uh, so you have to watch dealing with these ball machines, folks. Uh, any kind of ball machine, don't stand in front of it. And if you got little kids, don't let them put their hands and, and, you know, inside that thing. There, it is a machine and it's a belt and it's hauling ass. So it'll hurt somebody really bad. So I appreciate everybody watching. I do thank you so much for all the support. And uh, you know, we're gonna do this, uh, get through this diabetes, cause this stuff is like it becoming life threatening to me. I can't even eat food now. So uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot of, you know, getting this weight down. I was 240 folks. If you go look at my old videos, like my first videos last uh, last year, it was like, uh, it was about nine months ago, or going on 10 months, I started playing tennis again. I look at myself, I had the long hair, you know, my hair, my buddy and I were growing our hair out to c cut it off to donate it. And uh, I look like a different person, even in my driver's license, well, uh, when I go pick my medicine up or do business with people, when I have to use my license, because I won $1,000 a couple months ago off the scratch off ticket. And I showed the lady my ID and she's like, oh my goodness, you look like a completely different person. So that part I'm doing, I'm happy about. But I say about, I, I should wear about, I should weigh about 150. That's a good weight for me. And when I was in high school, I weighed like 155. I've actually shrunk. I was 
a little under 5'8", and now I'm like 5'5", five five or something like that. So I'm not really concerned about height and stuff like that. But I'm concerned about this uh, not being able to eat some damn food. So, uh, you know, and soup, I'm going to probably try to start eating some soup and stuff. It's just brutal, man. I can't imagine, I, you know, all these people going through these different things with that with that shit. And you never realize it when you're younger. Because I could eat two free pizzas by myself when I was a young guy. Uh, that guy, Mark Santes, was talking about it. You know, because he was like 30 or whatever. And he's a hell of a ball player. People say stuff about him, you know, troll his channel. Uh, but he, he's a hell of a ball player. And he's very knowledgeable. He, the man knows about tennis. He's very, very, for his age, he has a lot of wisdom. And uh, as he gets older, the knowledge that he, he accumulates, he'll be able to apply the wisdom with that to make uh, better shot selections on, you know, on the court, on the tennis court. But it's just funny because they're like young guys. They're old enough. I can literally be, I'm old enough to be the guy's dad. Uh, and, um, you know, they're just like talking about all the foods they can eat. And uh, they don't have no problems and stuff. And I'm like, you son of a gun. <laughs> I'd love to be you, man. Like to be able to eat whatever you want and not have to worry about it. But um, I think we're doing good, though. I mean, there's a lot of positive people on my coming in and saying positive things. I'm getting a lot of views on, on, my, on my videos. And, um, and I think that's good because I have a lot of friends that I play tennis with in the morning and they're, like I said, they're older people and they're, they're the nicest people. Like anybody can come out here and play, They'll, they welcome you with open arms and, and sometimes there's 25, 30 people out here uh, for round robin, you know, and everybody, um, you, get, you don't know who your partner will be, just be numbers, you know. And uh, I have a lot of variety of people I play against and then some really good players. And I'm holding my own. So, you know, a couple months ago, I'd be making a lot of errors trying to uh, hit with them at their pace. But now I can hit with their, because I've always been able to hit a clean, you know, hit pretty hard. But it's not the hard, you know, how hard you hit. It's getting the ball in the box. And as I was trying to say earlier um, in my couple of videos ago, people were like, well, how can I become a 4 0 player, a 4 or 5 player? But you have to work on it. And, it, and it's the speed of the game, folks. The faster you the, the ball moves and the more you, you can your eyes and hand and your feet and everything and your body's working together to hit it back over and you're just running back and forth just whacking the ball pretty much as hard as you're able to do it and keep it in play. That's how you're going to be level eight, you know, uh, getting your level up. And you have to, you know, you have to have something in your arsenal. You have to have a put away shot. Um, I watch a lot of Winston, uh, Winston do and he's a terrific player and I just think if he flattened his forehand out a little bit more and really stepped into some of his shots he would be even better than he is now he's a good player but everybody wants to hit there's a lot of top spin and when you're hitting with a lot of top spin you're literally giving your player giving the player on the other side an opportunity to, to track the ball down whereas if you hit flatter um, you get take less time off the ball I'm not saying like like Connor's flat but, you know, just straighten your stroke out a little bit and hit through it the same way, but, but with not as much topspin, and you'll cut the time off for them to react to it. And uh, I wanted to say congratulations to uh, Crew uh, Cell. He was playing really well. He lost in the first round, you know, lost, but he played some matches and beat some other guys, and um, guys were talking shit. I'm like, this guy's 30-something years old, hadn't played tennis, in, you know, on, at, at that level. And I think what to make him, if he was to get, you know, to get to where he wants to be, I think he needs to practice with people that have bigger serves, and you know, hit huge serves and practice on that on that part of it. But the speed, he, just a little bit faster. Uh, if he could get a little bit faster, that'll help him out a lot because a lot of shots he hit in, when he was losing that match, he was losing the match because he was just this kid that he was hitting against was tracking down every ball he hit. So when you're at a level and you're smacking the hell out of the ball and some other fellas running it down and getting all these balls back in play because uh, they got good defensive skills, it's, it's, it starts with the speed, how fast they are. So you have to develop, like, you have to become quicker. You have to become faster, and then that will help, you know, and that's at everybody level. That's why I'm sharing that with you. I observed that. And there's no technical uh, falls and uh, faults in his, his strokes. It's just, it's little simple things like getting quicker and faster, you know, and uh, and then being patient and, and, and also looking at up at that level, they have, people have idiosyncrasies. Like they might do this, uh, pull their shirt or whatever when they're gonna hit a kick serve 
or they might throw the ball a different way when they're going to hit a flat serve that people tip off their serves so uh, everybody does it they have idiosyncrasies and if you can catch that stuff and be an observant and watch that you'll be able to jump on them serves uh mr sell so uh that's my advice because these people were talking sh mad shit saying oh he's not no pro dude we're what you're looking at a, a, a guy that's uh, these two people that are playing at a really high level right in the world you know 300 400 200 in the world and smacking the ball and you're looking at it on a video and the ball looks like it's barely moving on video but in real life if you ever get off your ass and stop eating some potato chips you go out to see these tents these guys play at these levels you'll see that these balls are flying so fast that you're, you're you, i don't even see how the line judges can call some of these things because it's so close i mean and especially like a guy like nadell that hits with a lot of top spin and can flatten the ball and just missing balls like that you know an inch here or a quarter inch there a centimeter there here it's hard to pick that kind of stuff up so these people that talk stuff to you so don't listen to that, them if you ever come across my channel. I don't think you call it, I don't know, who knows, but I, I, I admire your courage and I think you're doing a great job. And I love to, I would love for you to hook up with Simon Freud and, um, and actually you maybe play doubles together and get in the U.S. Open. You know, I'd like to see that. That would be great. It would be a great accomplishment and I think it would, you know, bring a lot of attention to guys that are trying to make it and ladies because they have to pay for travel. They have to pay for all the stuff that you, before they even get to the tennis courts. And, I, and I, you know, there has to be some kind of players association where they're helping young players develop and also uh, help them travel and pay for some of the expenses. Because that's why you've got people that are tanking matches for money and betting on these games and, and tennis because these folks aren't making enough money to, to do the sport that they love doing. Uh, so that's tempting, you know. Because uh, there's a lot more money being made on these bet on the bets than the actual actual tor tournaments. I just think it's uh you know it's not the players' fault uh, most of the time. I wouldn't do it. It's you know it's not it's not my in my morality or ethics. I want to I want to win and I'm gonna go out there and do my best to win. But I understand that people get put in financial situations where they're gonna tank matches because there's that shit's all over the internet. They just caught a guy. He was making millions of dollars betting on tennis and getting to tennis players and uh, having them tank matches and points and stuff. And this dude had a job like at a pizza joint. He was like a, a manager at a, p a pizzeria place. So he, he had everybody fooled. Nobody knew he was doing it. He had anonymous names. You know, he was going under any, and there's a couple of people that were under investigation that were in the top 300 players, you know, men and women. So apparently from my understanding, from my research a little bit that I looked into it, soccer and tennis is the most bet on sport year round. Uh, those two sports, soccer and, and tennis, people bet their asses off on them things. So uh, I wish everybody the best, you know, when, when you're competing at that level and even at the club level, just have fun. I've seen people bet at the club level, $500 a set. Some of these people got it like that. Uh, I wouldn't get involved in nothing like that. I mean, cause you're gonna make enemies, dude. You know, people will get mad if you win and they're gonna get mad if you lose. So I'm not a professional tennis player or nothing like that or a professional, uh, you know, surfer or anything like that. I'm just a regular person who loves to play sports and uh, I'm having health issues. So I'm trying to share this, this stuff with you so you don't feel like you're by yourself and mental illnesses that go along with some of this depression, especially. So if you ever feel depressed or anything like that, you know, there's 1-800 numbers to call and for depression and and you can get your help because depression will go in spurts up and down. So you may feel real bad at one point and then you'll feel better the next time. And it's just because of your health doing that to you. So just realize God loves you and so do I. And, and people that talk shit and do trolling on these channels, they're not even out here playing. So if they ain't got no videos of themselves playing or, or any kind of thing like that, and they're trying to critique professional tennis players and critique, critique people like myself that are out here trying, to play better and to have a you know better life for themselves just brush them off man because a lot of them just are jealous because they, they they can't play no sports and instead of being jealous go out there and practice you know go out there and pick a tennis racket up and if anybody's around in this area uh, where i live at i live in port orange florida i'll hit i'll play against you know i'll play with anybody uh in tennis we'll get hit and have fun and 
you know, and, and, uh, and, and learn from each other. That's what it's basically all about. You're just learning about it. And tennis is a, is a game of ethics and morality, so it's a gentleman, gentleman sport, and that's what I like about it. You only have yourself to blame when you lose. Uh, unless you've got some person that's uh, calling bad lines, but even then, you have yourself to blame because you 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 got to hit the ball better for them not to be able to do that to you. So, thank you for watching, everyone. We're gonna take a look at this 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 little setup tonight, and uh, and um, I'm glad that I got a chance to come out here and get a little uh, exercise, and I'm feeling a little better just by talking to you guys about what's going on, and also uh, hitting some tennis balls and uh, giving bad reviews on the Slinger Ball Machine. So uh, thanks a lot. You guys have a wonderful evening and we'll see you soon. Um, I'm gonna try to see if these folks in the morning will let me record a couple, you know, record them playing. Cause some of them are really good and it's just cool. There's just a variety of different people and I just, I think it would be encouraging to help, you know, other people seeing uh, 80 and 90 year old people, uh, 70 year old people out here playing the game of tennis correctly and having fun and laughing and enjoying themselves. And uh, like, I, like, my, like my grandfather used to say, whatever one man can do, you can do also. You know, you may not be as good as that person, but you can do it. So uh, just go out there. And uh, like my man Ryan says over there at Two Minute Tennis, you got this. And I like that part of it. <laughs> I like that guy, he's cool. So uh, like he said, you got this, you can do it. And, uh, and we were going to do this together. And I just can't wait to go and play in a tournament and, you know, and uh, just uh, show, see what I'm able to do against, a, against competition. So thanks again.